So today is lab two, part B. Um, and as you guys will find out, it's kind of a lab in itself. We're going to do um, aseptic transfers. So you're going to learn how to work with bacteria today. And we're going to use a technique uh, called the street plate method. And we're going to use a particular method within that. We're going to use the quadrant method. And hopefully, like I said, you watch the videos on these procedures. So we're going to be working with um, three types of media food supplies for our organisms. So we have a broth culture, which is liquid. And remember, these are in tubes. We pick up it by the tube, not those caps, right? If you pick it up by the cap, the caps are not tightly fitted. The um, tube could fall and break, right, and bust. And especially the ones that you have on your lab bench right now, it's full of microorganisms. So then we'll be contaminating our environment something we don't want to do today. So when we're looking at these cultures, very important, pick it up by the tube, not the cap. The other type of culture we have is what we call a slant culture. And so this is where inside the tube there is auger added to the food and this creates a solid surface. We put it on a slant so we have more surface area to grow the organisms on. So you'll notice the organisms are growing on that slanted surface. The other that we have are plates or petri dishes. And again, you've seen these before. The food is in the bottom of the plate. The lid can be separated from it. Right? And we're going to learn the importance of that lid to help keep our stuff from being contaminated. So again, when you're looking at these today, keep the lids on them. Okay. So we're going to start with pure cultures, which means it's one species. And they're labeled on the tubes. And if they weren't labeled, trust me, I probably wouldn't know what they were either. You really can't identify these guys by um, their growth alone. So we'll start out. You, as you can see, you have a broth culture in your rack. You've got a, uh, several slant cultures. And you have one plate and an additional demo plate that I put on your lab bench. We're going to transfer these to sterile culture media. I have a setup for each one of you guys in the back. Each person gets their own setup. You're going to have two broths, two slants, and a plate uh, that you're going to use to culture organisms on. So they're sterile. There's nothing growing in them yet. And so we're going to do transfers. We're going to transfer from the broth to a broth. We're going to transfer from a slant to a slant. And we're going to transfer from a plate to a broth. And then we're, there's one more that's not in here. Probably... I don't know. We end up doing four transfers. <laughs> so an inoculation is introducing bacteria from the stock cultures we're starting with to the media that doesn't contain any organisms in it. Right? Why do we do this? Anyone know why we do that? So we can grow more, right? So we can have more bacteria to work with. So an inoculum is that material, right? So there's two different types of inoculum. I think most of these are what we call a heavy inoculum. There's lots of bacteria in these cultures. Sometimes you may have a little bit lighter inoculum, which means you have a smaller amount of organisms in your starting culture. Aseptic is what we're going to try to achieve today. And this means that it's a sterile technique that you should hopefully not contaminate your cultures with stuff from the environment or use your cultures to contaminate you or your environment. All right? So we want to keep the stuff within that environment. Right? And there are certain ways that we're going to move and um, move the material and certain points that we're doing certain things to avoid contamination. So why do we transfer, right, to propagate, right, so that we have more, so that they're, they're a fresher culture, there's more living cells, they're actively growing. We'll use a, lip, a loop, right, so these instruments. Um, it's a metal rod with, drawn into a loop, right, which helps us pick up the organisms, or sometimes you'll use um, tips or even a needle, which is just a, a straight rod without a loop on the end. You just, we're just using this as an instrument to pick up the organisms and move them from one place to another. And you may use pipette tips. I don't have a 
or serological pipettes that we'll use later that I'll show you. Um, there's different type of media that we employ in the microbiology lab. Stupid little fruit fly. Um, differential or selective media, we're going to use more of these later on. Um, they have certain properties to them, and I meant today to photocopy what's actually in the food that we're using today, but I'll, um, I'm going to give that to you guys next time. It's things like beef uh, extract and yeast extract, uh, very general food supplies that we're using today for the organisms. Um, where later on we use ones that have additional stuff added to them that are going to allow us to differentiate or select for organisms. So a little introduction to the different types of media. So differential usually will grow unless it, um, it's a differential and selective media, which it could be both. We use a lot of that later on in the semester. In this case, it's going to help us differentiate the organism. So we're going to see different growth characteristics based on what that organism can do or not do. One of the common things is fermentation that we look at and the production of acids from that fermentation. Selective media, on the other hand, has got something in it that's going to help us select for particular groups. So usually, therefore, it'll inhibit the groups we don't want growing, certain groups of organisms. Uh, very uh, common selective agent, or one that we employ, is one of the medias that we use that are selective is a high salt concentration. So if the organisms aren't salt tolerant, they'll get killed off by that large amount of salt. And only the salt tolerant ones, like staphylococci, actually grow. So, but when we say media, we're referring to a food supply for your organisms, right? But it can be different, lots of different reasons why you use it and, and, um, and what it may have in it. So, why is it important for aseptic technique? Well, we want to keep our environment, as I said, out of our samples reliability of our experiment. We've already seen from the ubiquity experiment, right, that, that where are the organisms found in this room? In the air. On our fingers. On our desktops, right? So all these things could potentially contaminate our specimens. And then we don't know what we're studying, right? Are we studying the ones that came from the environment or the ones that we originally started with? So we want to keep it pure, a single species, usually. All right, so we don't want to introduce anything other than what we're working with. Right. Safety for us as well, right? Like I said, if, if you pick up that broth culture, it's loaded with bacteria right now. You drop it, you're going to spread it out and contaminate our environment. Right? We don't want to do that. Right? So if we use proper aseptic technique, we're gonna, not going to contaminate our environment with unwanted organisms. And this is also why to remember some of these organisms we work with are pathogenic. Right? Um, Klebsiella pneumoniae. But seriously, you'd have to like lick the petri dish to get this infection. And it isn't a petri dish today, so please no licking. I will kick you out forever. Okay? Um, you don't want that infection anyways. It's also why we put all our bags away, right? Because we don't want any of this stuff spilling on and contaminating um, the things that we brought into lab. We'll put our aprons on. We'll wear our goggles. We'll protect ourselves. So if we want to isolate a single species, right, you're going to also have some mixed cultures. Each group, we have two different mixes going around the lab today, um, mix number one and mix number two. They're a mixture of two different organisms I know. You will try and figure it out next week, right? So we have a little um, mystery to solve next week. And so they're in broth culture, and one of them's kind of pinkish, and the other one you can see is just kind of cloudy. And we're going to plate them onto your plates and hope to separate them out. But you could start from any type of culture that's mixed. It could be a broth, it could be a slant, it could be a plate, right? And separate them out though, typically we're gonna use a plate because that gives us a nice surface area, a large surface area to be able to separate out these organisms. So there are several different ways in which you can achieve this isolation by streaking. 
It really depends on how many organisms you're starting with. If you have a small amount of organisms, you can usually do a single swab. And we kind of did this with our desktops, right? We swabbed and then you just rubbed it all over the surface of that plate. And for some of them, we, we didn't cover the entire plate, right? And we had lots of different organisms growing, right? And I'll take out those plates again today and we can look at them again. Quadrant shrink method is typically what you'll use when you have what's called a heavy inoculum, so a lot of organisms. And my plates that I prepared for you guys are the Klebsiella pneumoniae. You can see I really did start with too many bacteria too, and I actually didn't get any isolation. Unlike the, the other plate that I have for you guys that's not labeled, you can see individual colonies, little circles of organisms that have been separated out using this quadrant streak method that you guys are gonna to use today. So go ahead and take a second and look at that um, plate that has the yellow growth on it. And you can see how I've spread out the organisms and you have the individual cells there. So had I drawn lines on my plate, which I don't need to, I've been doing this long enough, I don't need a guide. You would draw, remember, where do we write on plates? On the bottom, right? So on the bottom of your plate, you could draw lines to generate the four different quadrants, right? That you can kind of see there, right? Four distinct regions on that plate, and yet I have no lines drawn. My trick when I do draw, and I'll show you guys, is I actually pick up my plate and look through it so that way when um, I'm using it I can actually see my numbers and they're in the right orientation. It'll make sense when I do the demonstration. So you have this plate, you have it marked out into your individual quadrants. What you're going to do is you're going to take from that broth sample with your loop and I call this invisible coloring because although we have some lines drawn here, the path that you should take you aren't going to be generating lines, right? You're not going to see anything. You're not going to see growth until you put it in the incubator, right, and we come back next week. What you want to do is start at the edge of your plate within your first quadrant, right, and you want to spread over the entire surface as much as you can, right, invisible coloring. Get every little square inch covered with bacteria. Then you're going to flame your loop. What is that going to do to the bacteria that are on that loop? it's going to kill them, right? It's going to sterilize your loop. So now your source of bacteria for the next quadrant is actually going to be the ones that are already on your plate. So now, notice you're going to start here in this crossover region, and you're going to go back and forth, but as you go, you're going to be picking up ones from this first quadrant and spreading them into the second quadrant, right? Again, invisible coloring, you're not actually going to see what you're doing. Next, you're going to flame your loop. Again, what does this do? Organism. Removes the organisms from it. So where is it going to be your source of organisms for the next section? From two, right? So from this section right here, <coughs> you're dragging into this third quadrant. And I probably passed into these quadrants. You want to do it like two or three times, right? See how he just passes in once, passes in two, three, and then stays in that other section of the quadrant. You don't want to pick up too much bacteria. The pr what you're doing is picking up less and less bacteria, right, so that you're spreading them out far apart from each other in each quadrant. And then the last quadrant, right, so hopefully by either the third or fourth quadrant, you've got cells so separated from each other, so far separated, that you get individual growths all by themselves. And if this is a pure culture originated from a single cell or a, or a group of cells of the same species, okay? And you want them away from each other, not touching others. So if you were to pick it up from the plate, you would have what's called an isolated colony all by itself, and you can pick up just that one colony. And then you could further study it. Make sense? So we'll see. This is a tough technique, right? Lots of years of practice. So don't be disappointed if it doesn't come out perfect next week. It's fine. Right. So as we, as we go, right, the growth is going to become less and less. So 
So depending on, and we're going to start with a loop today, usually your first quadrant, you might even start with a swap, right? And then you would continue from quadrant one, two, three, and four as we go around with a loop, right? Again, the goal is to pick up less and less bacteria. An easy way to draw those lines for beginning students is actually kind of to draw a goal post, relatively straight lines. Um, this is much easier than trying to do those angled lines. But you can do whatever you think will work for you. Same, same method. Um, and then usually what I suggest too, because we have a tendency, or you can draw the line such as that. And you can see you still have your crossovers. Keep track of where you're going. I usually suggest in this last quadrant, um, picking up your loop, dragging one line across from three to four and keep doing that up your plate. And remember not to cross into that quadrant too, again. And so I'll demonstrate this today and then you guys will do it. Each one of you will do it. What I ask that when you're doing it today is that you watch your lab partner, right? Because I can't watch all of you guys. And you guys are all going to watch me today when I demo and I'm purposely going to make a mistake because I want you guys to stop me and tell me that I made a mistake, right? So I can learn from it. Of course, I'm going to do it on purpose, right? But your lab partner may make a mistake, and you're there to help them, right, make sure they follow all the steps correctly. Is the end of the world if you screw up? No, right? We're just learning, right? It's no big deal. But if you know you made a mistake, what should you do? A scientist will always make a note of it, right, what you goofed. Okay. Um, this is a method that Peter used to employ in his research lab and you know they would be working with 96 I mean large numbers of bacteria and so instead of taking up in a single plate for a streak plate he would do little tiny streaks on his plate so he said he divided up even more than this but and they would actually use toothpicks right and use one end of the toothpick to add just a little section one line of bacteria and then the, flip the toothpick, right, and drag from this line to another little line on his plate, right, so we cross over. So again, just picking up a little bit of bacteria. Do that again one more time with, again, using a different end of the toothpick so that you're, you're picking up less, and you know, these are sterile toothpicks. And then the last side, he would do a zigzag pattern covering the plate. All right, so again, each time you're using each edge, each side of the toothpick, it's sterile. You're picking up just a little bit of bacteria and spreading it out. So hopefully somewhere in here you end up with isolated colonies. That's when you talk about some serious microbiology. <laughs> little tiny, using every little space. So today, as I said, we have some slant cultures that already have growth on them and some broths that are a broth, actually, two broths, yeah, that have growth. So when you look at these, you'll notice in your packet in the sheet that you have for today, you have a space for writing some notes about what you're starting with. All right, you have cultures one, two, three, and four, and then we have the two mixes. So as you look at these, the things for a description of growth are things like texture, right? So these, how would you ex explain that texture as it compared to this one on this slant? These are smooth, right? And this one looks kind of rough, right? So that's an adjective that you could use to describe these growths. Color, well these are kind of whitish, right? But you've got one in there that's colored, don't you, today? Take a look. you got a slant that's got some color. What color is it? Yellow. It's clearly yellow, right? That would be something you need to record for that particular organism. It happens to be pigmented. The other thing is, especially with your broth tubes, where is it growing? So notice in this tube, these two tubes at the end, you see how it's just growing at the top? You get like this chunk of growth at the top. Here it's kind of settled out in the bottom of these two tubes. And these two tubes, the whole thing is cloudy, right? Right, there's growth all throughout the tube. 
So for your broth cultures, this one and each one of your mixes, in addition to color, texture you really can't do, right, in a broth culture, but location is something you would want to record, okay? And then for plates, and I have my dissecting scope out, I'm going to take one of the plates so that you guys can kind of see. It's really hard with the naked eye to really be able to use some of these types of descriptions um, for these plates. So um, I'm not going to worry too much about that, just mostly texture and color, not necessarily morphology. Like if you were to look at it, as you can see, some of them will have like a convex shape to it, others are more undulated, flat where it's all even, or raised, raised with a spreading edge, right? And then when you look at the margin, right, this one's nice and smooth, right? Or what they call entire. I like to stick to smooth. It makes sense to me. Rhizoid. You see how it's like these projections? And this one's really irregular. And one of the ones we have is, is kind of lobate today. Um, and so I'm going to try and let you see that or a regular edge. On, and again, really under dissecting scope, you can see that. Filamentous is more like your molds, right, where you see those filaments. Um, the whole colony, if you look at the whole colony by itself, it could be circular or round, right? A lot of the bacteria we work with, others can kind of be irregular, like right? So see, look at the whole colony has this weird shape to it, and so does the, the one that I want to try and show you today. Some are filamentous or even rhizoid, right, where you have these specific projections along the margin. So here are some pictures of some of those examples. So one of the organisms that we'll be working with today is Streptococcus epidermis. As you'll notice on this plate, especially since the blood auger plate, you can really see, and I thought I had it say blood auger. Where'd it go? I don't know. It disappeared on me. So um, uh, you can see they're white, right? Clearly they're white. Um, they're circular, right? Most part they're round. Um, they're raised if you were to look at it more closely um, and smooth where our next one, and this is Micrococcus luteus, the one you have in front of you right now. Can you kind of see how the colonies are kind of like little hills? You can almost see that in this picture and you may even be able to see that on those plates. So you can see that it's, it's kind of um, convex. They're circular, right? They're smooth, right? See how they're kind of shiny even? And definitely yellow, right? Can't miss that. They're yellow, they're convex, they're smooth. This is actually the media's on brain heart infusion. This is the one I want to try and show you guys under the microscope today because you really kind of can't see it in this picture. But you can kind of see how they're kind of bumpy. Right? These, this is Klebsiella pneumoniae. It's one of the ones you have in front of you. It does have kind of a whitish colorization to it, right? They're, they tend to be raised. Uh, circular. Relatively circular. Definitely smooth. Sometimes they even look mucoid, mucousy, um, and shiny, definitely really shiny for this one. Where this one, by contrast, and notice how the growth even changes over time. You've got a 24-hour culture as opposed to a 48-hour culture. Um, you can see a real margin here. You see that? As it grows, as that culture ages. So this is a bacillus, um, and it's white, clearly, right? It's raised. And it has that spreading edge here in the 48-hour culture. And no, it's not a perfect circle, right? When you look at the whole colony, it's pretty irregular. It's rough looking, right? Almost even dry looking. Not shiny, not smooth, like some of these other cultures. So today, what you're going to do is you, you're starting with Streptococcus epidermis slant. You're going to transfer from a slant to one of your broth cultures. So I have labels for you today that I will give you for your um, sterile media. And you'll notice that broth is in bold because you're going to put that label on a broth tube, right? And then we're going to transfer Micrococcus luteus from a slant to a slant. So again, that slant is in bold because it tells you to put it on a slanted media tube. Bacillus serious you're starting out with a broth culture and then we're going to transfer it to a slant 
Clubs of yellow pneumonia is going to you're going to take from that plate, and we're going to transfer it into a broth culture. So remember, the slants are the slanted ones, the broths are the liquid ones, and then we have our plate. And again, this is showing streak plate method, right? Where you you have a where this is where you started, right? And then you spread from section one to two to three to four to where they had isolated colonies on that plate. And I think, I, don't, I promise I'm putting it back up. I just need to, I'm going to leave that slide up.